we hear the term zero trust or zero trust principle, zero trust model. Can you, in a nutshell, kind of summarize what that yeah. is? Yeah, so it, it is really the idea of you always need to verify. You never trusting completely, you always need to verify. And it is a process. So somebody doesn't just wake up one day and say, our organization now is zero trust so, you know, certified. There's not really a way to do that. So it is a, a series of going through a series of events where you're trying to protect what you have. You, you're looking at inventory and assets so you know what you have. Um, but it is this, this idea that I don't want to trust anything unless I verified what it is. And so it goes back to, I don't trust you unless you can prove that it's you. And it's a very interesting architecture shift too by that, that little pause that I told you about of the, of the network authentication workflow. It allows you to do something that's super unique that we haven't seen as an architecture change in this industry in probably 20 years. We now have the ability, instead of complying to connect to the network and then doing micro segmentation, we now have the ability to comply to connect to the application, have the user prove it is them with that MFA event, and that comply to connect, think of it as must be this toll to ride the roller coaster. Get the posture of the device, make sure that the user has completed a complex multi-factor event that we trust and, and meets the risk of the application that they're getting into. And moving away from that architecture of comply to connect to the network means that we can use the web browser as our executable to get to everything. Yeah. Our iPhones are, or Android phones are, are notionally just little front web ends to get to all of these things. Right. And now we start moving away from these VPN architectures and things of that nature to a everything's HTTPS, everything's web-based. Now we just have to comply to connect to that application and you can have a sliding scale of risk of what type of M MFA that you want to be able to use. Is it fair to say in zero trust, I'm, all right folks, this might be a surprise, I'm probably older than all of you. But when I was young, I used to go to Disneyland, you paid your admission to get in and you got this little passport booklet and it had so many tickets, there were different colors and it was Frontierland, Tomorrowland, whatever it was, and you know, when you ran out of tickets for that place, you couldn't ride those rides anymore. And of course, nowadays, you pay one um, bargain price to get into <laughs> Disneyland, and then essentially you've been authenticated to the whole park. And it seems to me zero trust is sort of going back to that old passport model where, okay, we're gonna authenticate you by paying something when you walk into the park entrance, mm -hmm. but then every ride you wanna go on there's a process of, are you allowed to ride this mm -hmm. ride or not? Is that kind of where we're getting with that, zero that, trust? That is exactly what it is because you're, you're moving away from where you're coming from and that is the zero part of zero trust is that we're going to make no assumption about where you come from or, or how you're connecting. We're gonna assess that at the time of access. And further, as we talk about the future, we're going to be able to, if your risk, uh, risk profile changes, while you have access, be able to remove access as well. Yeah, great. So, so you, you so you are so kicked you, off of this ride. right. <laughs> if you misbehave on on Space Mountain yeah. and, and and you're making you know sticking your tongue out at the cameras as it's taking pictures, you're no longer allowed to ride yeah. Space Mountain. Okay, yeah. great. Now I understand. Thank <laughs> you for that.